Tabua, and 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 Bula FM. Bula FM. Good evening. This is FBC News. I'm Akusita Tale. Tonight, civil servants from Education Ministry under investigation for alleged deception. 55 cases of dengue fever recorded so far. And survey revealed steady decline in Fiji's poverty level. Leading our news tonight, some staff from the Education Ministry will be investigated by the Fiji Independent Commission Against Corruption for alleged deception. Finance Minister Aya Sayed Kayum has revealed that these civil servants deliberately delayed the free textbook scheme. Farzana Nisha has more. The issue was flagged by the Finance Ministry after a last-minute request from the officers implicated. Minister for Finance Ayas Sayed Kayoum says these staff, despite knowing that the school starts on the 18th of January, only sought quotations a month in advance. We received those quotations in a request for a waiver three days before school started on the 15th of Jan asking that the, uh, the ten tender requirements be waived and that three printing companies specifically be given uh, the printing of these textbooks. And then in any case, they would be uh, delayed. Uh, what we also discovered was that the two of the three companies that they're recommending again to give it to were the same companies that were used last year and who had also caused delays. Um, now, obviously, this is completely unacceptable. We are reporting the matter to FICEC, uh, reporting the officers who were involved. Said Kiyum says Education Minister Dr. Mahendra Reddy has been away, and so I would suspect that he is not aware of this. Again, you see a lot of these things happen uh, without the ministerial office knowing about it. You know, you expect people to do their job. You expect that the person who's in charge of procurement, who's in charge of textbooks, We'll do the right thing. We'll, you know, ask for quotations if necessary. In fact, really, what we are looking at now is that we will now call for tenders for the next three years. We don't do it year in, year out because it chews up a lot of time. That's what most governments do for efficiency. The government is working with a few printing companies to get the textbooks out as soon as possible. This is expected to take a few weeks. Barzana Nisha, FBC News. The Health Ministry has recorded 55 cases of dengue fever as of Thursday last week from around the country. National Advice, Advisor for Communicable Diseases Dr. Maikama says of this, 99% cases are from the north. Farzana Nisha reports. The 55 cases of dengue recorded so far are laboratory confirmed and most of these cases have been reported from the Maduata province in the northern division. 39 in the north, is about 14 in the west, and uh, two or so in the um, in the central division. Eh? So in the northern division, uh, I think the focus, the cluster, is in uh, Madhuata, uh, around Lambasa and its periphery. Eh? So about 90% uh, of those cases from the north uh, are all from that area in Madhuata, eh? Lambasa and, and its peripheries. Whereas in the west, um, it's mostly Nandi, Lautoka, and Ba. And now some from Rakaraki. Dr. Mike Kama says there is not much threat in the central division currently with only two cases being reported so far. He says looking at the past trends, the health ministry took a proactive approach this time around. The second half of every year and into the first half of the next year, of the new year, is when dengue cases tend to rise. Eh? <clears throat> so this is not new. Eh? This is something that's expected. Uh, but we were hoping that this would have been <coughs> minimized uh, or even it wouldn't have happened if, if we kept to the uh, ongoing cleanup campaigns from October of last year. Eh? It is why that particular campaign, national campaign, started anyway. 
Dr. Kama says these 55 cases have been recorded in the past three weeks, of which many have recovered. Razana Nisha, FBC News. Fiji is on the right track to becoming one of the most modern states in the world following a recent survey that shows a decline in the country's poverty level. This has been revealed in the 2013-2014 Household and Income Expenditure Survey released by the Fiji Bureau of Statistics. The first results of the 2013-2014 Household Income and Expenditure Survey reveals that poverty in Fiji is steadily declining. The incidence of poverty has decreased from 35% in 2002 to 2003 to 31% in 2008 to 2009. It further decreased to 28% in 2013 to 2014. People living below the poverty line has decreased by 15,372 when compared to the estimated 252,777 in 2008 to 2009. There is also a significant decline in rural poverty from 43% in 2008 to 2009 to 36.7% in 2013 to 2014. However, urban poverty has increased from 18% to 19.8% in the same period. Attorney General Aya Sayed Kayum says Fiji is on the right track to become one of the most modern states in the world. Household income survey that was carried out in 2013 and 2014 has revealed that poverty in Fiji has dropped by nearly 4%. That was in 2013 and 2014. We expect, we expect that the figures for 2014 and 2015, and indeed in 2015 and 2016, poverty levels will drop even further. Syed Kayum says Fiji can also be the Singapore of the Pacific if everyone works together with the government to improve the overall living standards and productivity. Singapore, ladies and gentlemen, is the size of beauty. But we all look up to Singapore. And the only reason why Singapore is where it is today is because every single government department, the department, the civil servants, the entire country came together and had one focus, to make the nation great. And the only way to make the nation great, ladies and gentlemen, is to ensure that whatever jobs you are given, whatever you are being paid for, you are doing to the best of your ability and giving it more than 100%. 33.9% or an estimated 80,000 of the poor population live in the Central Division, followed by 32.2% or more than 70,000 reside in the West. The record visitor arrivals of 754,835 last year has resulted in more opening for Fiji's workforce, which is expected to lower the poverty rate even further. More than 1,000 cattle are infected with bovine tuberculosis. However, the Agriculture Ministry says this is not something to worry about. Permanent Secretary for Agriculture Uraya Waimbuta says most of these cattle are in the Central Division. Save Ratambua has more. The livestock officers in the Agriculture Ministry tested over 40,000 cattle for bovine tuberculosis in December last year. Of these, the Ministry identified 140 farms which had infected animals. To us, uh, that is not really alarming because uh, it's just because of the concentration of cattle, especially dairy, dairy cows, in a small area. But uh, when we look, uh, so the prevalence uh, uh, percentage of uh, uh, infection is around uh, seven percent only for dairy farms. Urewe Mbuto says that the testing continues as the ministry wants to eradicate the disease from these farms. And uh, for this year we are so fortunate that uh, all the people that were engaged with uh, the, TB, the TB and also the brucellosis uh, had been formed as a confirmed team. So these are established people that are being uh, taken in by government just to focus on uh, trying to eradicate uh, TB. Chairman of the Dairy Farmers Cooperative, Vijendra Prakash, says it is important to remove infected cattle to stop the spread of the disease. It is very important to replace. If these two diseases wouldn't have come, definitely dairy farmers would have reached about uh, more than 45% of our local uh, consumption that is required and we would have been in a very good position uh, to a self-sufficiency in next three to four years time. The Agriculture Ministry aims to fully eradicate bovine TB from all farms by the end of the year.
Saboy Ratambua, FBC News. Still to come, what authority of Fiji staff directed to provide high-quality services? And I love Mirchi FM. Hi, my name is Sonny from Canberra. I love listening Mirchi FM online. I am Urmila Devi, I am Tawwa. I am Shandil and Ashnil. Tawwa has been locked in the same way. We are here in Mirchi FM. Mirchi FM is hot. I'm Shelly in Tanga Nausori. Mirchi music simply been dance in Nausori. I'm here in the same way. Mirchi FM is very nice. Mirchi FM. Welcome back, this is FBC News. The staff and management of the Fiji Water Authority have been directed by the government to deliver quality services to all Fijians. The directive was issued by the Attorney General at the WAF's Staff Excellence Awards in Lamy last night. While 2015 has reaped many rewards for the Water Authority of Fiji, the staff, including the management and its board members, have been reminded that they play a critical role in providing clean and safe drinking water for all. Attorney General Ayase Yedkayum directed them to improve their services and deliver what is expected of them. And indeed, it is the responsibility of the management and the CEO of the board to ensure that what they are supposed to deliver, they also deliver. At the end of the day, it's an entire teamwork approach. 16 awards for achievements were up for grabs last night and WEF Chief Executive Opetai Ravai says this is not the end. He says one of the biggest achievements so far is providing water to areas that have been facing problems for some time now, which includes Dele Navesi, Waitamai, Kashmir and Dele Lambasa to name a few. We started in 2014 on a journey to eliminate the 67 intermittent supply areas around Fiji. And I'm pleased to announce that we are now left with only 12. And this year we are totally committed. We are totally committed to getting it down to zero. Ravai thanked the government for approving the salary increment for his staff. Team WEF, we must lift our game. As 2016 is the final year of our current strategic plan, which we started implementing two years ago, I urge all of us to put in the effort in going that extra mile, pushing our limits, challenging our comfort zones, and reach for the skies. The Attorney General says the government will ensure that every civil servant that delivers services to ordinary Fijians will be rewarded with the right remuneration. Police are looking for a suspect who allegedly broke into the House of Employment Minister Semi Corella Visau last night. Acting Police Chief of Investigations and Intelligence, ACP Luke Navella told FBC News laptops and mobile phones were stolen. ACP Navella says the house was vacant at the time of the incident. He says they're still trying to establish when the robbery happened. Investigations continue. Meanwhile, a 55-year-old man has been charged for allegedly assaulting another man with a piece of timber. It is alleged the man hit a 54-year-old man with a timber and as a result, he is admitted in, in hospital with serious injuries. The incident happened in La Kemba, Lao yesterday. The suspect has been charged with intent to cause grievous bodily harm. Good roads are accompanied with its own dangers. Authorities are now working on making sure the newly opened Rekete to Number Walu Highway is safe for the travelling public. Eleanor Turangevi reports. The opening of the new Rekete Number Walu Highway will now see more vehicles using the 70 kilometer stretch of road. The Deputy Secretary of Operations for the Department of Works, Manasa Lesuma, says there are risks that come with it. Good roads will always. Uh have uh, drivers uh, that are they who would probably abuse um, the roads because of the good roads that we have. The Department of Works is now working with the Land Transport Authority on the need to ensure the new highway is not abused by drivers. We're working towards trying to ensure that uh, while we are have, while government has provided um, the road facilities, we are also working with the. Uh, LTA in trying to ensure that uh, measures are put uh, in place to, to minimize or even avoid uh, accidents. Eh? Billboards will soon be erected to warn road users that while there are better roads to use, they need to be more responsible. We instructed uh, uh, 
um, LTA to, to talk with uh, MWHA in the north uh, to try and have those billboards erected. Uh, that is something that they will try to put in place uh, before the end of the month. Eh? Uh, it's something, uh, measures that we feel that we need to take. The new highway is the main access road for trucks, buses and other vehicles travelling from Nabowalu to Lambasa and Savo Savo. Eleanor Turangayu, FBC News. Harnessing the plus factor has been an ultimate aim for the Melbourne-based Island Breeze Rugby Plus program that was held in Ovalau last week. 115 youths converged in Levuka for a week-long life skills program that is heralded to shape their lives in a way like never before. Savera Tamboa has a story. Using rugby as a vehicle to prepare youths to become useful citizens has been the crux of one week sports complacency and coaching clinic in Lebuka, Walao. So we do want to uh, emphasize again the deep value of the process of Rugby Plus is the holistic approach of this uh, development, uh, which is the mind, the soul, the body and the spirit, and, um, and also their, their relationship outside the rugby field with their families, their village, uh, you know, with, with uh, the opposite sex and all that is, that is very, it's paramount in their development. Government is now also involved in the program which has been running for the past four years and they have applauded the hard work done by the youths of Voma village. You know, a, a, a rugby boy himself holding a rugby ball, you know, and his knife and his fork and, and a, a newly built two-bedroom house behind him. And that's the kind of rugby that we want to see in, in, in Obalau and also in Fiji, where majority of our rugby players, even playing uh, Obalau Rugby Union, uh, maybe around 90, 90 to 95% are purely you know, village farmers. So Most of these young men and women are well equipped after the program and ready to make positive impact in their communities especially when it comes to influencing their peers. I learned more about uh, my, especially the, my discipline and attitude. Uh, through the influence of rugby, you can just uh, go out there and uh, be an, uh, a leader. Melbourne Rebel swinger Safanene Walu is one of the players that has benefited from the coaching clinic. Sabay Ratambua, FBC News. Over 40 micro-entrepreneurs gathered in Lothala Bay Suva today to sell their products at the Westpac Market Day. The monthly event gives opportunity to small-scale businesses to earn extra cash and also attract customers. Sriti Prasad has more. This monthly market day gives vendors a chance to increase their networking and improve on customer service skills. 68-year-old Elena Michel, who is a retiree, is in the business of selling pot plants ever since. I meet a lot of friends, that's for one thing, and uh, second thing, it, it, it's a way of earning in, income for retirees. And um, yeah, like I said, you meet a lot of friends and you make new friends and uh, it's a, another way of uh, selling your plants. Yeah. Ati Kurusunga of Northern Osori says she never misses the market day as this helps her earn extra cash and meet new customers. I love being here because there are things that I make but there are also things that I bought from other women that are around Fiji that I sell here. So I'm actually sharing wealth to other women in Fiji. A variety of goods, household items, clothing and food were sold during the day. Westpex manager women's markets, Eseta Nandakui Tavuki says this event helps small traders gain confidence in their business. We believe that uh, by doing this, it's a platform that these entrepreneurs come uh, display their ways, sell their produce, and also an opportunity to network with one another. The Market Day is part of Westpex Microfinance Markets, which provides entrepreneurs a platform to get hands-on experience and at the same time earn extra profit for their business. Shriti Prasad, FBC News. Coming up in sports, firm belief in Fiji 7 squad for Wellington 7s. And good turnout at Regional Power Table Tennis Camp. That and more after the break. Bula, I'm Duri from Nasinu Market. My choice is simple, Gold FM. Only the classic hits. My name is Yvonne. I'm from Nandi. I love Gold FM. Only the classic hits. <laughs> 
Sayandra. My name is Sunny. Only the Gold FM at Golden Point Resort, Rocky Rock. Hi, I'm Anna of Nasinu. When it comes to a radio, my choice is always Gold FM. Only the classic hits. My name is Anna and I'm from uh, Nandy. I love listening to Gold FM. Gold FM, only the classic hits. Gold FM, only the classic hits. Welcome back, this is FBC Sports. There's a lot of belief within the Vodafone Fiji 7's camp of a positive outing at the Wellington 7's next weekend. Skipper Osea Kolinisau says the players know all too well the demands of the modern game and are ready to perform their task on the field. Talendo Zakataka reports. Apart from the inclusion of France-based star Semi Kunatani, there were no major surprises in the Vodafone Fiji 7's team named for the Wellington and Sydney 7's. There is a wealth of experience and talent within the side and the players are eager to put to good use all the training they have done during the off-season. It's really exciting and uh, positive with the team we selected. Uh, unlucky for the boys that uh, missed out, but there's been a lot of competition and uh, I think the coach has selected uh, the players he's, he's fit to take on the Wellington tournament. Coach Ben Ryan is being hailed for his confidence in sticking to his local players to do the job. I commend Ben Ryan for believing in the local players. You know, uh, we've been working really hard. Uh, we deserve to be selected. Uh, we deserve to be um, to represent our country and um, make the people of uh, Fiji proud of our efforts. The Fiji 7th team flies out to Wellington on Monday with a stern determination to continue and improve its good work from the opening two tournaments. Silent Otakadaka, FBC Sports. Some of the country's top local rugby teams were at the Suva Grammar School today to compete in the Citizen Sevens Tournament. Coral Coast Sevens Champions Police were bundled out of the Cup semi-final, losing to Ratu Felice 12-7. Warden's Gold and Ratu Felice are the front runners for the title. The Cup semi-finals are currently underway. The Cup final winner will receive $3,000. The Fiji Under-19 cricket side got a taste of what awaits them in the ICC Cricket Under-19 World Cup after a crushing 322-run defeat to South Africa in a warm-up match in Bangladesh yesterday. The defending champions elected to bat first and piled on 332 runs for seven wickets in 50 overs. Fiji was all out in 30.4 overs as no batsman was able to reach double figures. The national side will make its historic maiden appearance in the ICC Cricket Under-19 World Cup next Wednesday when it faces England in its opening pool game at 3 p.m. There are efforts being made to increase the number of power table tennis players in the region. Officials were happy to see a large turnout at the regional workshop for power table tennis players in Suva this week. Chalendo Dakataka has more. Nine countries from around the Oceania region were represented at the regional para training camp in Suva. So the objective of this camp, this is something that we've been planning for for months, um, was to try and get all the countries in one place and to experience the highest level of coaching possible so that both the athletes can have certain expectations on coaching and so that the coaches can learn to become better coaches. Overseas participants were impressed by the natural talent possessed by their local counterpart, which will bode well for promoting the sport in Fiji good um, because it's inclusive for a lot of players. Anybody can play table tennis no matter what your ability. Beginners, old people, young people, women, men, young pe you know, little kids can play and learn. And we have some great players here who have um, a good chance to um, represent their country in the Paralympics. And if some of those players can do that, there's big opportunity for the future and that will really grow the sport. If the training camp comes to a close tomorrow as the Fiji Table Tennis Open Tournament officially begins for local players. Silent Ota Kavaka, FBC Sports. The Adelaide United football side have stretched their unbeaten run in the A-League to eight games after a 4-1 win over the Brisbane Raw, Raw last night. The victory leaves Adelaide to 23 points, seven clear of Roy Krishna's Wellington Phoenix, which sits in seventh place. <laughs> Fine weather was experienced over most parts of the country today. Tropical Depression 08F was located near 23.3 south, 
176.6 west at midday today. It is moving south at about 10 kilometers per hour and weakening. Associated rain bands affect Tonga and Niue. Temperatures soared above 30 degrees in all centers today. Lambasa was the highest at 34 degrees. Ba was on 33 degrees, Nandi and Lotoka on 32, while Suva and Sabu Sabu recorded 31 degrees. Outlook for tomorrow, some showers over the eastern parts and interior of the larger islands. And further outlook, expect much of the same. And to the main points again, civil servants from the Education Ministry under investigation for alleged deception. Health Ministry records 55 cases of dengue fever as of Thursday last week and 2013-2014 household and income expenditure survey reveals a steady decline in poverty level in Fiji. And on to this week's poll question and we are asking, was back to school shopping cheaper this year? Visit our FBC website to take part. And remember, you can send us newsworthy pictures and videos on email citizensize at fbc.com.fj or share it with us via our Facebook page, FBC News. Or if you're on Twitter, follow and tweet us your news tips at FBC News or simply hashtag FBC News. You've been watching FBC News. I'm Aksita Tale. Good night. I'm Sarah. I'm from Tafwa and I love listening to the FM, the FM Box. My name is Freddy, I'm uh, from Gamia Tong. I listen to Mario on the traffic jam every afternoon. Hi, my name is Sala, I live in Asinu, today FM rocks. My name is Denasa and I'm from Lutoka and I love listening to today FM. My name is Lulamila, I work at Golden Point Resort. I love listening to today FM, it rocks in Rakiraki. I'm Mary from Mandera, I love listening to today FM, today FM rocks. We love listening to today FM, today FM rocks. Today's hit music on Today FM.